Right up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17. And came, and let's back up to 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Now notice, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. So all of us who are close and far away. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We both, Jews who belong to God and Gentiles who belong to God. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Access unto the Father, that's incredible. That was something that couldn't be done until Jesus came. In verse 19, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Isn't that cool? In verse 20, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, he is the chief cornerstone upon which everything is built. He's our foundation. In verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. We are the body of Christ, the ultimate temple of God. It's so cool. In verse 22, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of of God through the Spirit. Together, through the Spirit, God inhabits us all as one body of Christ. It's, a, it's amazing. Let's go into chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians, written by Paul the Apostle in verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, which indicates it wasn't his choice. He didn't do it willingly. He got drafted, okay? <laughs> In verse 2, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is that the Jews and Gentiles who are born of God with the temple inside them are the heirs. In verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. It wasn't always made known to the sons of men, the, the mystery of God. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. In verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. That's good news for all of us that are Gentiles. And of the same body 
and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. In verse 7, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. His power has great effect. His power is manifested in this world as he sees fit. In verse 8, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given. So Paul is saying he was given that great grace. And he persecuted the church. So he's very thankful for that great grace. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. In verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. How we all communicate together through the mystery. Where in this mystery is the Holy Spirit in all of us that brings us all together like individual cells comprising one body of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. These things have been hidden for thousands of years, and now they're being revealed. In verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Let's look at that again. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. According to to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Uh, the Lord's purpose was laid out from the beginning of the world, from before the foundation of the world. He was slain before the foundation of the world. Well, we know he was only slain on our, in our world 2,000 years ago. What that means, slain from the foundation of the world, means it was decided, it was written in stone, and it was irreversible before the world even began. In verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 3, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. How can we have, how can we have access with confidence if we don't have assurance of salvation? You can't. In verse 13, wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations, which is troubles, for you, which is your glory. In verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He's our Father. He's the head of the family. We are all named in Him. You, did you know that you have a name that's just between you and Him? The Word says that He will give you a white stone upon which a name is written, that is known only between you and him. In verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Might is one of the seven spirits before the throne. By his spirit in the inner man. This is the inner man is the one who is born of God. Okay. In verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height. That's four dimensions right there, okay? And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. Wow. <laughs> Let's look at 19 again. And to know the love of Christ. That's God in the human body. Which passeth knowledge. It, you can't understand love just with knowledge. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That there's nothing he can't do through you. 
in verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, <laughs> according to the power that worketh in us. What power works in us? The spirit of our king. In verse 21, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let's go straight on into chapter four of the book of Ephesians. Wow, we're really blazing, aren't we? I, I don't want to go through here too fast, but <laughs> uh, let me let me see. Do you uh, do you guys have any? Oh, oh, okay. I've got one here. I need to to read to you. Um. Karen says, hello, Lisa and everyone. My husband is in need of prayer. He went to the ER yesterday for shortness of breath and chest pain, but they sent him home telling him everything looked all right. But tonight he is worse and saying his chest hurts and I don't know what to do anymore. I've prayed all day, but he's not feeling better. Could we pray for Casey if it is not too much to ask? Absolutely. Let's pray for him right now. Father, in the name of your wonderful son, Jesus, we lift Casey and Karen before you. We ask, Father, in Jesus' name for Casey's healing. Lord, let your healing power rest upon him right now, O oh Lord, and heal him, we pray. In the name of your wonderful son, Jesus, and we thank you, my king that your word says whatever we ask of the Father in the name of the Son will be given to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We claim that promise for Casey and for Karen in Jesus' name. Glory to the King. He's so good. He's so, so good. I'm um, glad you guys in the chat room are praying for Casey also. That's great. I'm so happy to see that. Um, Karen, let us know how he's doing, okay? Because I believe that God answers prayers when he says, whatsoever ye ask the Father in the name of the Son will be given to you. And we just ask the Father in the name of the Son for Casey's healing. And so I'm waiting to see it. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, we're going on into chapter four. Let's see. Did we already do that? Or are we fixing to go into chapter four? And we're just fixing to go into it. Okay, I was going to get a drink. Whew. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Praise God for cold, happy water. <laughs> the day's coming when they would kill you for a bottle of clean, cold, happy water. Okay? So be thankful to God every time you take a drink of clean, cold, happy water. In verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 4, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, he's, he always refers to himself like that, doesn't he? The prisoner of the Lord, because he didn't come, he, does not, he didn't do this by choice. <laughs> he got drafted. So, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, what's the vocation wherewith you are called? Well, where do you work? What are you doing? That's the vocation with which you were called. You're not working, um, you know, you're not a slave unto your employer. You, you serve the king, and the king sends you to that employer on your mission for him. And you are to do well by that employer, just like Joseph did well by Potiphar after he was sold into Egypt. 
And Potiphar respected Joseph because everything Joseph did was blessed by God. And people notice that kind of thing. So it's, he says, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So no matter what God has you doing, walk worthy of it. Do the very best you can. Do a good job. Be faithful, honest, and true. And God will bless you and bless your employer. And in that, and in that process, you will become very valued to your employer. So when layoffs come, it won't be you that's getting laid off because you're valuable to your employer. In verse two, with all lowliness and meekness, meekness, uh, gentleness. Let's see what, um, what is it saying that, let me give you the definition of meekness. The fact or condition of being neat, meek. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate that? <laughs> That's not a definition. <laughs> Submissiveness. Okay, there's a definition. <laughs> Don't you hate it when it says the factor condition of being meek, being meek? Submissiveness. Okay, let's look and see what it says to be meek. Meek definition. <laughs> Okay, no definitions found. <laughs> okay, here's one. Enduring injury with patience and without resentment. Ah, notice one more time. Enduring injury with patience and without resentment. Mild. Okay. Uh, here's one that says gentle, quiet, unaggressive, benevolent, kind, courteous, humble, unassuming, modest, soft, pliant, gentle. Okay. Now that's what meekness means. So with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, that means be patient and hang in there. Don't ever give up. Don't ever lose your cool and come to the end of your rope. Your rope never ends. God's got the other end of it, so you're fine. In verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We need to be peaceful and kind toward one another rather than kicking each other when we're down. In verse 4, there is one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. See, there's one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, not multiple hopes, one hope, Jesus. In verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In verse 6, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. He's amazing. One God and father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. We're all like cells in the body of Christ. And together we all make up the body of Christ and every tiny little cell is important to the body. In verse seven, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we are given grace. You don't earn that. In verse eight, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So captivity is, he led captivity captive. So now Jesus came to set the captives free. They're going to be all right, even if they're captives. Okay. 
and gave gifts unto men. He's awesome. In verse 9, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he descended into the lower parts of the earth. He went to hell because our sins were on him. You know, he couldn't even die until the sin of the world was laid upon him. For the wages of sin is death, and he was sinless. So therefore, he couldn't die. And then when the sin of the world was laid upon him on the cross, then he was finally able to die. And he descended into the lower parts of the earth, down into hell. He led captivity captive. He took the keys of hell and death. He made an open spectacle of the powers of hell. And then he went and brought his own out of the other side, which was called paradise or Abraham's bosom. In verse 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might fill all things. Everything consists in him. And that's uh, John 1, 3, I think. In verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So see what this is saying is that if you're an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, that is because he created you to be those things. And it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, he created you to do those things that you do. In verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith, we will, we will all be in the unity of the faith um, there in the New Jerusalem and when we come back. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is really amazing really, really amazing that we're kind of like, think of us as like individual cells that all together make up the body of Christ. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Reekage. They lie in wait to deceive. That's religion. That's the religious leaders. They just lie in wait, planning to deceive. Sneaky suckers. In verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. In verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So he's drawing his children as he has scheduled according to his timing. We are, that's amazing. We keep ending up on the 17th verse every time. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. <laughs> 